I'm Shane Murray with Northern Lights. We're here at Hack Night uh, in Malmo, Sweden, and today we have as a guest uh, Christopher Kuhlenberg, who's with Telecomics. Uh, welcome, Christopher. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, first off, can you tell me who Cameron is? Cameron is uh, a, a sort of an artificial intelligent bot uh, who is uh, on our IRC channels. So it's, uh, it's the Mega Health software, and she learns everything. She runs on a computer, and she learns everything that we say, and uh, then she re responds to us when we talk to her. And after a while, she gets kind of familiar uh, to us uh, because uh, she talks like we do, but with the grammatical errors. So yeah, she's kind of our, our mascot, but ah. uh, in, in one sense, she's also uh, our leader. Yeah. Uh, because since she consists of all of us, she has learned from us, uh, she is uh, kind of a, a, a computer-generated representation of all of us. And that means we have, so, so we have one artificial intelligence leader, still we are in charge. So we are leaderless uh, in that sense. Can you tell me why crypto activism is so important? It's very important today because uh, uh, for one reason, uh, there are many states, I mean, I consider the internet to be stateless in that sense that it's it's for everyone on the world, and uh, it's very important for people who live in and in, in dictat dictatorship regimes uh, to promote the freedom of speech. Sometimes uh, that's the only way of communicating uh, securely. Uh, it's also uh, of importance in uh, Europe and the United States, where recently. There has been many wiretapping laws, and there have been uh, also from uh, the file sharing, um, the copyright en enforcement have been very pr successful in lobbying laws that uh, will intercept your traffic and disrupt your freedom of speech. Oh, okay. So it's, it's really about democracy then, would you say? Yes. It takes crypto, crypto munitions or, or cryptographic software to promote uh, freedom of speech. Uh, we will have a more democratic world. If, if people want to get involved in crypto a activism, what should they do? Uh, I think that uh, if you are from a technical background, it is much easier because then you know your way around the internet and how to find other people uh, who are using these softwares. If you're from a non-technical -techn background, uh, well, of course, I would say that y you should come to Telecomics because we're open for everyone. But uh, you should really find a community of people who, uh, who you can learn from and where you can uh, share knowledge with other people. That's, I think that's the, because you cannot go to the school of crypto cryptography. Well, you can actually. You can go to university and study mathematics, but that takes too much time. Uh, so team up and find friends that uh, are online, most of them. Uh, and uh, start doing it. Start hacking with your friends. That's the best way of learning, I think. That's how I did it. It, it. it seems that there's a lot of people who are interested in getting involved in crypto activism, but can you give any advice in terms of what people maybe should not do? Well, I think that um, there are uh, dangers uh, involved. I mean, first of all, you should be nice in one way. You should use it for good purposes, but that's, I, I think that's obvious. Uh, but second is that Sometimes uh, you can put yourself in more trouble uh, than uh, if you use these softwares. In some countries, cryptography is not allowed. Uh, there are restrictions on, on cryptography in certain countries. Uh, there are, um, uh, you can get arrested for running these softwares on your machines in some countries. Uh, like in China and Iran, uh, they, uh, it's, there are har harsh laws. Uh, also, um, if you're cryptography software fails for some reason uh, and you try to do something that you wouldn't do and these the, the software will leak I mean this happens so sometimes the softwares don't function the way they should do you think that uh, uh, crypto activists in the West can help to democratize Iran and China and whatnot through hosting servers on on, on their own yes this has been proved uh, already uh, during um, um, during uh, unrest, uh, situations of unrest in these countries, uh, there have been European and US, U.S. citizens helping out by setting up proxy servers, by promoting the software, by writing tutorials on how to use it. Uh, and if you look at a country like China, there are hundreds, maybe thousands of proxy connections and VPN tunnels going out of China, and they oh. break, they tear down the golden shield. Oh. Uh, it, this is the fi central firewall of China. 
So it works today. It's, it works every day. And this will require the help from the outside. So I think that uh, building these systems, and, and the most advanced of these systems are dark nets, of course. And the dark nets are, uh, uh, one, one of the softwares is ITP. It's a very, very advanced router that will penetrate almost any firewall and it will make sure that your uh, traffic is very encrypted. Uh, and uh, these softwares work, but I mean, they, have, they still have to be developed. They, they, they still have to be reviewed yes. because it, the communities that are actually developing these softwares are quite small and uh, they don't have corporate budgets, of course. Mm -hmm. So I think that ev everyone who learns and, 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 and joins in and participates will, will dramatically help uh, the development of these softwares.